You are listening to the Marketing Equation Podcast with Martin Shervington. Hello, ladies and gentlemen. This is the third take, this one. Uh, I'm Martin Shervington and it's Marketing Equation with Mark Wynn. And we're going to talk about Guernsey and a project that Mark has going on to make it the happiest place on the planet by 2020. Mark, welcome. Hi there. I'd like to say we, we, we're going to go just beyond happiness. We're, we're actually going to make it the best place to live on Earth. Oh, there we go. Like um, happy, happiness is but one part of quality of life, um, but uh, it's a very important one. But we're, we're going for the whole thing, energy, healthcare, awesome. um, every single thing that you can think of, we're going to try and uh, become the best at. Well, let's start. Let's begin with you, and then I want you to tell people, because they probably don't know where Guernsey is, unless they or French. <laughs> or so, that, but, but let's go for your background. How come you're doing such an adventurous project? Um, that's a really good question. Um, I don't know. I was actually a direct marketer in a former life and, um, and um, you know, built the business with my brother selling health supplements from Guernsey into the, into the UK. Um, and whilst I learned a lot, there was a lot about it I didn't really enjoy in terms of building business. Um, just for the sake of kind of making money and stuff, and um, and also you know wasn't really feeling I was being that creative. Then I spent a bit of time coaching and mentoring entrepreneurs to actually build remarkable lives rather than kind of build businesses. And then that's really scaling into how do you do that at country level? How do you um, how do you create an environment where people kind of pursue their dreams and also change the world at the same time? Great, and you're a graduate of the Singularity University as well, which we've spoken about before. Uh, I, I have, yes, I have been through that slightly odd institution that rewires people's brains from linear thinking to exponential thinking, and it's, it's kind of one of the primary reasons why I do what I do now, is you start to see problems solve, being solvable that weren't solvable before, and, and really the mission that, that, that I came out of Singularity University wanting to solve was um, government and bureaucracy. Because um, Guernsey is a small island nation in between UK and France, and we're a town, but we're also a country, and we're outside of the EU, and that really means that we have a very fast legislation system. We have a very small bureaucracy, and the idea was is to bring world innovation here and speed it up. Yeah. Uh, because if I want, you know, coffee with the chief minister in two days' time, that's possible, and and also you know can go go for a jog with somebody runs the health service or you know and it's all kind of we all live in a very small space and um, that actually allows us to solve problems in ways that you can't really do anywhere else and um, for me it was about how do you create the marketing mechanisms uh, and the underlying cultural desire for change in an environment that's as high speed as it is because islands normally are quite conservative yeah small communities are quite conservative so it's how do you get a conservative community to be really progressive and use this platform and that's really the marketing problem that we're solving here and how is it going? Are, are people seeing what you see? Yeah, I mean, I think, um, uh, yeah, I mean, it's, it's, I don't know if you've ever seen the TED Talk, How to Start a Movement. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. And yeah. To, are, are you number just, one or number two? This is the question. Yeah, <laughs> I'm a former, my job title is former loan nut. Um, <laughs> so I, I was number one, and then my good, good friend and uh, wingman is number, is, uh, Jock is number two, and we launched the project just over just we, we celebrated our second birthday last weekend actually um, and very much in the beginning it was it was really two two mad people saying they wanted to make Guernsey the best place to live on earth and then we did a TED, TEDx conference to 100 people and people started doing things and now we're very much on the um, kind of the national radar I think uh, one of our politicians recently announced his vision for the country to be the happiest and healthiest country in the world by That's 2026 great. Um, newspaper agreed with them and things like that. So we're kind of through the gate. There's a lot of key people in the mm. community that actually be believe what we were going on about is possible, and that's been done inside two years. Um, and then you know you go from, and we've got an election coming up next month, and um, some major kind of structural shifts in terms of how government works. And so I think we will be the first country in the world that goes exponential. Um, certainly we've done all what the What does that mean? Let's, let's, let's look at that. Not, a lot of people will be excited by that term, but what, what does yeah. it practically mean for the country? Well, it, it means um, that it's structured in a way that can capitalize on the future. Um, at the moment, if you think about most governments, they've got election cycles every four years. Yeah. 
Um, they're very low on technology usage. Um, they're very, you know, legislation cycles can be 10, 20 years updates and things like that. I think we'll be the first country that moves towards real-time legislation creation. Um, we'll be the first country that tackles many other many other things as well. I think we'll, we'll probably be the first country to go towards digital currency. I think um, actually we were the first kind of one of the first. I think we had the first printed money. I think actually that yeah. wasn't linked to gold, linked to gold. So you know we've got a, we've got a strong history uh, for innovation, and I think um, we're we're going to take that forward on, on another level I mean I mean it's actually not that hard to to tip a country providing you collaborate with everyone you know one of, I think one of the biggest enemies to progress is negativity yeah um, and we kind of have a zero negativity policy and, and and we're a kind of a highly positive movement that works with everyone finds way finds ways of creating win-win solutions for everything and and you know we really just get on with building and we don't wait for anyone and um, and we're just experimenting all the time, you know. Pretty much, I call ourselves the Google X for government. Um, you know, we're a we're a skunk works that just keeps coming up with ideas, and you know, the good ideas that feel safe. Government imports, um, and and we just keep doing that. Um, so we're just off the back of two experiments recently in the last couple of weeks: the world's boldest kindness experiment, where we dropped, I think, four hundred thousand pay it forward. Um, cards on 60,000 people to see what would happen um, for a week and this whole kind of cultural shift happened <laughs> where everybody just started being um, kind to each other, random acts of kindness and there was you know things things being bought by strangers and you know acts being done for an entire population but the knock-on effect of that was understanding that kindness, is, teaching kids kindness is actually the most effective anti-bullying program in the world um, and that's now very much moving towards being on the curriculum, and that's from one direct mailing piece um, can transform whether bullying exists in two years' time. We've also just run the world's boldest, boldest happiness experiment. Actually, that starts uh, on Monday. Um, we put together the Dalai Lama charity Action for Happiness with a technology platform from Canada, Plasticity Labs, that can measure happiness. Um, and demonstrated that well, we're demonstrating when we're building the science any government can cost effectively invest in happiness um, and scale it globally and that's just one experiment that was put together in two weeks and you know hopefully the science will come out on that in a few weeks and the rest of the world will be able to invest globally in happiness for a fraction of what it cost the healthcare costs of not investing in happiness and these are the kind of experiments that we can run in a small community um, and uh, you know we can scale. Usually we can scale from idea hit in the island to national adoption inside two years. So we just ran a hackathon to end diabetes two in two years, which is the world's most expensive healthcare condition. Um, that would seem impossible in a large country, but you know large countries need the data from small countries to prove that things are possible. Yeah. Uh, and so we're really trying to provide that data set for as many solutions as possible. So are you a case study, do you think? Do you, do you think the movement, would you, is it something that's going to be sort of formalized and say, hey, we're going to take this to the UK and then America? Or are you providing the information because you're blogging that you're hoping people are going to pick up? I mean, what is, what is the plan for Mark with this? Do we, are we um, going to see you 2024, you know, going for PM? I don't know, Mark. Where, where are we going? Or PM of what? I don't know. Um, yeah. <laughs> I think. Pick a country. If, if, um, I, I don't know. I mean, I think if the world hasn't changed completely by 2020, I wouldn't have been doing my job correctly. So I don't think it's a PM thing. You know, this is a real kind of change the planet in a very short period of time project. Um, you know, you think about it, you know, terrorism attacks and things like that. Um, you know, one of the things that scared me at Singularity University is effectively, you know, by the end of the decade, a kid in their bedroom can create a killer disease. Um, there's kind of no control system on the planet currently available that can deal with that kind of existential threat. Yeah. We've got to fundamentally rewire society in a very short space of time if we're going to actually survive. Um, and, you know, I don't like to talk about the negative because I spend my whole day in the positive, but there's a very serious issue why we're trying to create the best place to live on Earth and tr try and create a scalable national model and, and the infrastructure for government and bureaucracy that can not leave people behind because behind every story of kind of terrorism or loan is a lonely person that wasn't served by their community and yeah. um, you know we've got some really really important things to tackle but, but but ultimately you know how do you get change to happen when people are terrified with fear and that's an awesome marketing challenge for me 
It's like, how do you rewire people away from fear using marketing? Because marketers usually use fear to sell. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> um, we're, you know, we're, I'm trying to use the opposing mechanisms. Is how do you use marketing to, to create awe and inspiration and human connection? And how do you use those mechanisms to drive social cohesion and to, to radically move humanity forward? I think it's beautiful, Mark, and I've seen this develop over the time. But what I'm hearing, it, it, it's tangible, it's real, it's happening now. Yeah, I mean, we're emergent now, so we're on the knee of the curve in terms of what we're doing. Um, yeah, I mean, it's taken two years to kind of build the underlying support to explode through. So I think, you know, the world will hear, be hearing a lot about this story in the next six months um, because we've done all the grassroots work to actually yeah. make the change possible. And now it's a question of telling the planet around. And the more we tell the planet about it, the more that all the innovators come here and start contributing some of their time to actually creating the ecosystem effect that we're trying to create is because most problems are interconnected. And so, I, you know, what we say is to innovators, spend 10% of your time focused on Guernsey, and we can create that kind of magnifying glass effect of everybody pointing their efforts into a small space yeah. to, see, to seeing if it actually comes through. So it's, I mean, it's a very well-designed project. It's, it's, you know, we hope, we hope, and we're pretty sure that it's going to work and, and create a kind of a virus of possibility around the planet. Uh, you know, the hard part really was in the first six months when there was just a few of us <laughs> and people got tired and we're still saying it and, you know, we kept the belief going yeah. even through some of this dark stuff. And, you know, and it's one of those things, you know, it takes time for when you've inspired someone, you know, Really, their projects don't really emerge for two years from when you first inspire them. Mm. So you've got to be you've got to be planting seeds all the time, knowing that those seeds will grow to something down the down the way. And so we planted literally hundreds, if not thousands, of seeds in the last two years. And each day, a new seed emerges into a beautiful flower. And and we're getting the benefits of more and more of those flowers emerging. And and, and we're really getting to the point where <clears throat> it's impossible now for us to stay in, into an old linear model. Um, because there is so much kind of innovation happening, social innovation happening. It all walks some linked to us, but some not even linked to us now. And, and I think that's what's really interesting is you can transform culture with good marketing and, and, and good systems in a very short space of time. So, I mean, I think that your story is amazing. And I think what you're doing is just one to watch now. It's going to be great. In terms of people listening that want to start a movement, because you've done something unusual, you've, you've created... You know, so you've done the work, you've, you've put the effort in, you've created the evidence that this is now on that point of the curve that's going to happen, by the, you know, all being well. What do people do to get stuff going for themselves? Because creating a movement is a high-end marketing thing. It isn't a campaign. Yeah. Yeah, yeah I, mean, I mean, it really starts with saying it out loud, right? <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, intention. Uh, this is what we want to do. Yeah. 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 I mean, I, you know, it took me, and repeating, and, you know, it took me 50 coffees to find the first madman that would say, yes, let's do it. You know, I was willing to have 50 coffees saying I wanted to change my country. Yeah. Um, and I was willing to look silly. And then I, and then the two of us were willing to stand up on stage in front of 100 people and say it. Um, and we, we, were, we were only ever looking for what our next follower all the time. Um, and, you know, you know, spent a lot of years, last two years, just convert. You know, we will run a conference with 200 people, but we're only looking for five, right? We're looking for the next five people that we can inspire. We're not. We're not. We're not trying to convert everyone. We're, we're always. We're trying to look for the people that are ready that want to change their direction. Um, you know, where a lot of people are trying to convert everyone, a lot of people are trying to put a lot of effort into things, and you actually need a very, very small number of people to shift a community. Yeah. Um, you know, small teams now can do what countries had to do decades ago. And, um, so really it's about if you want to start a movement it's what do you what is that one thing you want to change in the world and then really it's about finding the three four five other people that share that mission and then starting to put together best practice social media best practice um, <clears throat> um, you know marketing to actually increase the size of the movement and you know some of it and, and you know these days it's not about seriousness actually you, 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 you think about what you watch on social media what you watch online now if it's not fun <laughs> it's not easy. Yeah, it's it's really difficult to scale, and I think you know there's too much seriousness in politics. There's too much seriousness in in life, and that's why, from a marketing point of view, it's not really working. And I think social movements need to become less serious. Changing the world should be a highly fun, mischievous endeavor. Yeah. Uh, and the more we actually start to build movements that way, the more we're actually going to start to really, really 
to really unlock a new kind of revolution, which is to me it's a revolution of joy, happiness, nonviolence. Um, and you know, I suppose if you look think about the, the umbrella guys in Hong Kong and things like that, you know, the smart ways of creating social movements now. Um, and <clears throat> violence actually slows movements down. Um, so we, we've got to develop very, very clever, kind of highly creative systems that are focused on bringing joy and happiness to the world. And in that, we will actually make change happen. I, I, do you know what? I'm going to wrap up the podcast now because I don't think you could say it any better. I think it's great. <laughs> Where can everyone find you and find uh, more about the project? Uh, the best way to do is to actually go to my website, Mark with a C, win, W I W N dot com, and all of my projects, uh, including the Dandelion Project, are all linked from there. Awesome. Everybody, that was Mark Wynn. Watch this space. There's a movement <laughs> happening. Thank you so much. Thank you for listening to the Marketing Equation Podcast, brought to you by PlusYourBusiness.com and Effective.fm. 